All the glory must be to the Lord. Shamanaka Sapayade. For he is worthy. can take notes. I want you to get ready to take notes. Let's learn together. And then at a particular point, we're going to ask the Spirit of God to come. There's going to be healings tonight. There's going to be deliverances tonight. There's going to be the breaking of yokes tonight. So Isaiah chapter 60 from verse 1 to 2. I'm going to try and make this brief so we can allow God to come in. Thank you. He says, Arise, shine. Now, those of you that can see the screen, just read with me. Can we go together? One to go. Arise, shine. For your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Next verse, verse 2. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, gross darkness, the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory. The first question I want to ask is why are we instructed to rise and shine? Every instruction that God gives to us is targeted towards the revealing of an aspect of God. Why would God say to us, arise and shine? It's simply because God wants to release his glory to us. God wants to release his glory to this church. God wants to release his glory to the people of this church. At the end of this program, Pastor, God wants to take us into another realm of glory. If your amen is louder, God will visit you first. Let me say that in tonight's meeting, make sure that your neighbor's amen is not louder than your amen. Let me give you a story quickly because sometimes when people come to church, they don't have an understanding of God, what God wants to do in their lives. You see, everything that happens to a man is connected to that man's ability to release his faith. So there was this particular young guy that has been a Christian for a very long time. And then he suddenly feels that God had abandoned him. Now please follow my story. He felt that God has abandoned him and that God no longer loves him. So one day he just woke up and said, you know what? I'm going to go to the club and I'm going to do whatever I want to do. So that fateful day, he went to the club. He stayed in the club all night. He drank and he was drunk. As he was returning back, because the seed of God in a man does not allow a born-again Christian to sin at will. 
and does not allow a born again Christian to practice sin as a culture, as a lifestyle. He was born again, but he felt that God was not fair. He felt that God had abandoned him. So he decided to do what he did. But by the morning of that day, his conscience began to fight him. His heart began to rebuke him. As he was walking back home, he met a pastor praying for a member of the church in the front of the church. All right? Because that was the road he was going to pass to his house. And as he walked towards the church, the pastor called the member down, laid hand upon the member, and was prophesying over the head of one of the members very early hours of the morning. And the pastor says, I see your heavens open. Who said amen? amen. Somebody said amen in the choir stand. Yes. Come, come and receive a touch. Because you are sensitive to know how the spirit is moving, God will visit you tonight. Amen. That's why you have to follow the pastor. Because there's a time when pastor makes an instruction, you think he's just talking, but you have to catch it. I just made that statement, that sister caught it. Watch out for that sister because no more will the things that are chasing. Listen, listen to this, listen to this. Sister, rise up again because there's a prophecy coming for you. What people are chasing after, after this meeting will begin to chase after you. So he laid hand upon this young man and was prophesying. He said, I see your heavens open. You still did not get the joke. <laughs> that when pastor declares a word, you should catch it. Am I speaking too high? Is my English too high? Should I step it down? Okay, good. Hallelujah. And so the pastor was praying for that man. He laid hand upon the man and said, I see your heavens open. I see God release helpers to you. You will never bet to survive. I prophesy a new job, a new car, a new house, a new business, a new destiny. In the name of Jesus. Now you are getting it. Sit down for a minute. So the pastor was praying for the young man. And as the pastor was praying for the young man, you know how people, pastor, you know how some, how some church members just think that pastors don't know what they are doing. The guy just knelt down there. And as pastor was praying for the guy, he did not see anything. He just knelt down. And pastor was sweating and prophesying. This young boy that backslided, that went to the club and was coming back as he approached where the pastor was praying something in his heart told him to connect you know how drunken people act so the guy was staggering and as he staggered he got to the pole he held the pole when the pastor says your helpers will remember you Amen. so the drunk guy staggered and then he held the pole so when the pastor said, your helpers will remember you. The guy. Okay, wait, let me preach. Hold on. Slow it down a bit. Amen. So when he said, your helpers will remember you. So the guy shouted, Amen. When he says, your door shall be open, the guy shouted, Amen. When he says, you will never return to this same country, the guy shouted, Amen. And after that pastor finished praying, this guy that backslid that went to the club said to himself, God, I'm sorry. I sinned, but I promise you, I will never repeat this again. Just remember me. Now listen to the story now. Three months later, that young man came back to the same church. The moment he left that place, I'm talking about the guy that went to the club. I'm talking about the guy that got drunk. The moment he left, left that place, just barely some days after, he got an email, a job that he had applied for for so many years they contacted him to say that he should come for interview he came for that interview god favored him he got the job the job was so good that just to start up the job they paid million into his account listen to this listen to this he was to do one month in nigeria two months abroad that was how the job was his life turned around and then he suddenly remembered i was walking past a church when the pastor prayed it was after that pastor's prayer that my life turned and he said i want to go back to that church and appreciate god that remembered me now how did all this start 
as the guy was in the church, he pulled out his checkbook. He wrote a check of half a million and he put it in the basket. When the ushers brought the money to be counted and those in the finance saw half a million, they thought he was a Yahoo boy that was trying to play schemes, you know, with the church and quickly reported to the pastor. He said, Pastor, there's something we are seeing in the offering basket that we have never seen before. Pastor said, what is it? He said, there's a check here of half a million. Can you please announce so that we know who brought it so we don't make a mistake? Why they were about to announce that if your name is so, so, and so, and so, please, can you wait behind and see pastor? The guy got up from the crowd and was walking towards the pastor. As he was walking towards the pastor, the ushers came to stop him because they thought he was an assassin that wanted to kill their pastor. And the pastor says, no, let the boy come. The boy now came up. He said, pastor, do you remember me? The pastor said, no. He said, I was standing very far on so, 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 so day. And you were praying for somebody in the front of the church. That day I was coming back from the club. I was drunk. I felt God has abandoned me. And I just did what I wanted to do. But as I had you pray, my heart told me that God had forgiven me. That God was going to give me a chance. And I connected to the prayer. He says, Pastor, after that day, my life turned around. And I've come again to write another check to support the church. Can somebody shout hallelujah? I prophesy what God will do in your life uh, will look like a dream for some of you within seven days from now God will remember you for some of you within 21 hour, 24 hours from now God will remember you you will not return the same way you came I say you will not return the same way you came the God of heaven will remember you God will open your page, open your case, visit your life, touch your destiny. If you believe, shout a big amen. amen. Pastor, can I tell you the interesting part of that story? Somebody say, Pastor, tell us. The young man that that pastor was praying for on that faithful day was in that church. No, you didn't hear what I said. Did you hear what I just said? Did you hear what I just said? The particular boy that pastor was sweating over and pastor was praying for on that day was in that church. He did not receive it. But somebody else that had faith connected with it and took it and their life turned around. What is the lesson from this story? When you come to church decide not to go back the same way you came when the angel comes with a blessing if he comes to the choir and then somebody is getting distracted but there's a sister that is saying hey our pastor did not bring this man for nothing there must be an anointing upon this man's life this woman will not go back to where he came from without blessing me and that person is shouting amen and collecting it and then the girl or the lady that the pastor is speaking to is there say ah He's busy looking at the pastor's stomach. He's busy looking at the pastor's shoe. <laughs> he's busy looking at the pastor, the way he's jumping around and, and dramatizing. But somebody is saying, Pastor, you will not go the same way. As long as you are ready to collect, you will collect. I prophesy to seven of you here today, collect your miracle. to seven of you collect your deliverance in the name of Jesus as I bow my knees on this altar as I bow my knees on this altar I prophesy God will remember you God will remember your family God will remember your children God will remember your destiny in the name of Jesus sit down I began by telling you why would God say to us arise and shine it's simply because there is something that God wants to do he says arise give me that scripture again he says arise he says shine for your light is come so that what will happen the glory of God will be seen is somebody with me here today please listen to this there are three G's 
that every man needs if you are going to succeed in this life. Are you ready? If you're a believer and you're a Christian, there are three G's that you need if you must succeed. Number one is gift. Did you get me now? I'm just throwing this at you. That's not the core of my message, but the Spirit of God just brought me. It's called a gift. The Bible says that the gift of a man make it way for him. Make it room for him. If you don't have a gift, you are in disadvantage. Please hear what I'm trying to tell you. Everybody that is born has something that makes them unique. Everybody has something. Everybody has a gift. It is time for you to discover what it is that God has given to you. Some people say I don't have a gift. But you know how to talk. And every time you talk, you can convince people. Do you know knowing how to talk well is a gift? You say, oh, I don't have a gift. But you can sing. And every time you sing, the glory of God comes. Everybody has a gift. Are you following me now? Yes. What is the second? My hikapa. I'm talking about 3G that everybody needs. The second G is grace. Everybody must have what? A gift. And everybody must enjoy grace. What is grace? Grace is the help factor. Grace is what? Is the help factor that God brings into your effort. Grace is when God helps a man so that beyond his struggle and his sweat, he finds result. That's why you see two people selling side by side. There's no diabol diabolic interference. But this one is making it. And then this one is struggling. It is because what? Grace. Grace is divine assistance. Grace is divine support. Grace is the divine help of God. Are you following what I'm trying to say? Yes, Everyone that must go far, you must have grace. Can I shock you? Nobody can be saved outside grace. Grace is what Jesus has done for us so that we can collect everything that God has for us. Am I speaking to somebody? Yes, now, if you're not a graced man, then you are open to disgrace. Raise your hand and say, I am a graced man. I will never be disgraced. Come on, say, I'm a graced man. I will never be disgraced. In the name of Jesus. Grace is what removes your name from those who are disgraced. Grace is what takes your name out of those who struggle. When the grace of God smiles at you, you will realize that what other people do and they fail, you will do it and succeed. What other people look at and they see the door is shut, you will look at it and then you will see a way out. Can I prophesy to somebody here? May God engrace you today. I say may God engrace you tonight. May the oil of grace come upon your life. Now put your two hands on your head and say, my father, my father. Say, my father, my father. Pour your oil of grace upon my life. Help me tonight in the name of Jesus. Oh yeah, take that prayer, take that prayer, take that prayer. Pour your oil of grace. Pour your oil of grace upon my life. Help me tonight. Help me tonight. Pour your oil of grace upon my life and help me tonight help my destiny help my family help my ministry help my destiny pour your oil of grace upon my life take away disgrace Oh Lord, take away disgrace. Oh Lord, take away disgrace. Oh Lord, take away shame. Oh Lord, take away shame in the name of Jesus in Jesus mighty name Jam your hands together and take your seat. Is somebody still following me? I said there are three G, right? I gave you the first G. The first G is gift. Everyone is born with something. Everyone is born with a gift. So ask God to show you. Then number two, everyone needs grace because you need help. If everything that you get in life is by sweat, you are under the yoke of unprofitable labor. If everything you get is by hard work something is not right it means you are under the yoke of struggle to earn if you have to sweat to survive it is a curse it means that something is wrong with your root can somebody pray say my father my father every curse on my roots every limitation from my father's side from my mother's side 
that is making me to sweat before I succeed. In the name of Jesus, break! Open your mouth and begin to break, 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 break. Every cause, every cause of limitation from my father's side, from my mother's side, from my bloodline that makes me to sweat, to make me to labor before I succeed. In the name of Jesus, I command you cause to break now. I command you curse to break now. I command you curse to break now. In the name of Jesus, every curse in your root, every curse in your blood, every curse from your family is hereby broken in the name of Jesus. Now take your seat for a moment. Remember where we're coming from. There are three things every man needs, every believer needs, every child of God needs. You need gift. You need grace. What is the third thing? You need glory. Did you hear that now? That's right. Thank you, mama. Somebody shout glory! You need glory. Gift, grace, and glory. But let me give you a secret. Are you ready for it? You don't pay any price for your gift. Your gift is what you are born with. Do you understand? People who have the gift to paint, they paint. Some people can learn to paint, but those who have the gift from God, they paint. So you don't pay any price for your gift. You only develop that gift so that it will begin to manifest in its full potential. Can I tell you the second thing? Grace. You don't do anything for grace. Because grace is what Jesus Christ has done for you so that you can become a beneficiary. Am I speaking to somebody? All you need to do to enjoy grace is believe in Jesus and know him more. Because the grace of God grows through knowledge in Christ. But let me give you a powerful secret today. Glory is not for free. You don't do anything for a gift. You don't do anything for glory. But you must pay the price. Sorry, you don't do anything for gift. You don't do anything for grace. But you must pay the price for glory. Are you with me? One step above gift is grace. You see everybody that has a gift but the one that is shining is the one that God has graced. But in the company of those that are graced the ones that carry glory you can't catch up with them. You know what glory is? Glory is the beauty that God puts upon a man. Glory is the fragrance that makes you attractive to everybody that your destiny demands to come your way glory is that thing that nobody can see but it makes you smell well it makes you beautiful in the eyes of everybody glory is color glory is radiation glory is multiplication in what I always call the exponential so if you are moving 1 plus 1 2 plus 2 Glory is what? Two. Raised to power 1,000. I don't know if you understand that. It means that you will suddenly stay here and something will lift you up. Eh? Thank you, mama. <laughs> you will just suddenly jump from here. I don't want to try it so that I know my waist. But you know how you will jump from here and you will arrive at where? At Wusetu. <laughs> That's what glory does. Glory changes the dimension of your life. That's why not everybody carry glory. Because you have to pay the price for glory. Let's go back to the scripture for today. That's why the Bible says, Arise, shine, for you to get glory. You must arise, you must shine before the glory of God will come upon you. Now listen to me now. There's something that is called the 50-50 principle. Someone say 50-50 principle. This scripture shows us the 50-50 principle. 
for glory to come, you must arise. You must shine. And then the glory will come. The question is, what do I arise from? When you talk, tell somebody to arise, it means the person is on the ground. It means that the person is falling. It means that the person is in a state where he cannot engage and communicate rightly. So God is saying, you must rise for you to get glory. Now please follow this now. Follow this. To rise and to shine means you must take responsibility. There are people that want to carry the glory of God but they don't want to take responsibility. Am I speaking to somebody? You must take responsibility. You must be responsible for the glory to come. Please follow me now. Follow me now. If you don't rise, then you can't take the glory. You must rise, reveal yourself for the glory to come. Is somebody hearing me today? Now watch this. Give me verse 2 of that scripture. What are we rising from? I'm going to show you three things you must rise from. It says, for behold, darkness shall cover the earth. Cross darkness, the people. But the Lord will rise upon thee and his glory shall be seen. What are you rising from? You are rising from three things. Are you ready? Rise from the practice of iniquity. Kabayada kasa. Hey. Hey. How can glory come upon a man that practices iniquity? Whose life contradicts the God he's standing to serve. Rise away from those habits that mock you when you stand before God. Rise away from those habits and addiction that makes you leak the glory of God. That's why he says, rise up. You know why? Because iniquity makes men fall. Iniquity reduces a man. The Bible says righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach. So he's saying, if you want to carry my glory, get up from that ground. That's not where you belong. Let me quickly say this, child of God, you are not, as long as you have given your life to Jesus, you are no longer a sinner because your sins have been forgiven. You must take the responsibility to walk out of everything that forces you down to sin. You know why? The child of God has the ability of God. And in the ability of God is the purity of God. In the ability of God is the righteousness of God. So you have the ability, you have the capacity to live right. So God is saying to you as a child, rise up! Stop meddling with iniquity. Stop living a wayward life. That is not who you are. God has called you and has forgiven you. So get up! Take a righteous stand. And stand with God. Are you with me? So number one, rise from iniquity. What's the second thing you have to rise from? Rise from wickedness. There are people that have the nature of wickedness. There is no compassion in their heart. How can God use you if you don't have compassion for human beings? There are those who will cheat their neighbors. Those who will defraud their brothers. Those who will see somebody who is dying and will look away. How can God give you more glory when you cannot pity the helpless? God is saying, rise from the act of wickedness. Never feel resentment against anybody and never stay in that position where you will see somebody that is helpless and need help and you turn your face. Because until you rise out of the seed of wickedness, the glory of God will not be projected into your life. They send somebody to come and stay with you just because the family is struggling. You can call that person a housemaid or whatever, but you are treating that person less than your own children. That's the act of wickedness. That's the act of wickedness. Your children live very, eat good meal, but this person, just because he's a bit in disadvantage, you, you treat the person wicked and then you want more glory. Glory does not come upon people who are wicked at heart. Are you with me? So he says, rise. Arise. It's your responsibility. Make a decision that from today, I will no longer be wicked. 
I'll be kind to my 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 fellow human. I'll be nice. I will do the bit I can do. I will stand to help. He says, rise from what? Rise from wickedness. Am I speaking to somebody? What is the third thing you have to rise? Rise from unbelief and doubt concerning the God of heaven. You can't follow a God you don't believe. You cannot carry the glory of a God you doubt his ability. See, God is not weak. God is not he is not tired of doing miracles, but can God find faith? Can God find a true believer? Hear me, rise from your formal experience of failure. So many people have experienced so much failure. Right now, they struggle to believe God. Or whatever happened to you yesterday is yesterday. There's a glory ahead of you. There's a better life ahead of you. Don't judge God by your yesterday. Judge God by the Bible. And believe him for what he's going to do in the future. Am I speaking to somebody? It's time to rise away from doubt. And rise out of unbelief. And rise out of what? Double mindedness. The Bible says let he that is double minded. Never think he will receive anything from God. The Bible says without faith it's impossible for you to please God. The only way you can please God is when you have faith. And you believe in God's possibility. I know that things are tough in the country today. I know that life seems to be a bit difficult. I was talking with my boy as we were driving down. And he was telling me how people are suffering and how life has become tough. Oh yes, that's true. People are suffering. But listen to me. The suffering continues if you lack the spirit of faith. The only way you can survive in this time and age is when you believe the God who is a rewarder of those who seek him. Let me give you the story of the man called David. I'm talking about King David that you know in the Bible. David got to a point. He began to testify of God. What did he say? He says, I have been young. I have been small. He says, now I am grown. I am an old man. One thing I have never seen. I have never seen the righteous forsaken. Neither have I seen his children beg for bread. It doesn't matter how tough life becomes. It doesn't matter how bad the economy becomes. If you are a child of God in covenant with God. And you have faith in God. You will never beg for bread. And your children will never beg for bread. You will never be forgotten. You will never be forsaken. God will make a way for you. He's a present help in time of trouble. He's a present help in time of need. God will show up before it's too late. I said God will show up before it's too late. I am speaking to seven persons that will jump up and shout a big amen. I said God will show up. I said your God will show up. I said your God will show up. I said your God will show up. Before it is too late, your God will show up. You will not be stranded. You will not be put to shame. You will not beg. You will not borrow. You will not be thrown out of your house. You will not suffer shame. You will not die early. You will not die sick. You will rise out of authority. In the name of Jesus. So are you following what I'm saying now? You have to rise from doubt. You have to rise from doubt. If you don't rise from doubt and unbelief, how can God show his glory? That's why the Bible says, rise, shine. Ah, uh, for what? For your light is come. Then the glory will follow. Somebody shout a big amen. amen. How many of you want the glory of God today? How many of you want the glory of God? We are going to begin to pray quickly. And I want you to pray like never before. Because as we pray, the deliverance power of God will begin to drop in this atmosphere. Yeah. Let me also tell you one more thing you must rise from. The first three things I talked about is you have to rise. What's the first one? From what? From iniquity and sin. Number two, you must rise from what? Yeah. Wickedness. Number three, you must rise from what? Yeah. Unbelief, doubt, and faithlessness. Well, now listen to this now. Listen to this. Give me verse 2. Give me verse 2. Of the same scripture. Verse 2 quickly. You must also rise to confront the powers of darkness. Media, can you give it to me? It says, Behold, darkness shall cover the earth. 
let me tell you this glory comes to those who are fighters did you hear what I just said those who are fighters are the ones qualified to carry glory if you don't fight and shake yourself off from every oppression of the devil you cannot be free to enjoy the glory of God so he's saying to you rise from iniquity he's saying rise from wickedness he's saying rise from what from faithlessness and unbelief but he now says rise confronting the powers of darkness am i speaking to somebody challenge the powers of witchcraft darkness will come it is a prophecy end time prophecy you cannot change but you must decide to get up with a fighting spirit and say to yourself i don't care if there's witchcraft in this area it will not suppress my children i don't care if there's if there's i mean demonic powers here they will not suppress my spouse they will not suppress my business you must get up as a fighter challenge the workers of wickedness confront the workers of evil push them back out of your territory push them back out of your space and bring the glory of God down did you hear that now every time the glory of God comes upon a man there are four things that God gives to that man are you ready to write now there are four things that God puts upon the man once the glory of God comes upon a man there are four things that God puts upon the man now let's go number one when the glory of God comes upon a man there are four things that God puts on the man thank you father are you ready for this number one when the glory of God comes upon you the first thing you will experience is the goodness of God you know what the goodness of God means it means everywhere you go God will be good to you did you hear what I just said a man who carries glory is a man who enjoys the goodness of God time will fail me to go into scripture that's why I'm just I'm just giving you the point you know what Moses said he said sir if you will not go with me then I will not go you know what God replied to him Moses said Lord show me your glory you know what God replied to him he says my goodness will go before you every time a man receives the blessing of glory he enjoys goodness you know what goodness is when God begins to help you when God is good to your family when God is good to your children when God is good to things around you that's number one so we're going to get to a point I want you to cry out and say God release your glory into my life I want to help you understand what that prayer means it means let your goodness escort me everywhere I go let people see me as that man that God has been good to hey did you hear what I just said let people see me as that woman that God has been kind to that God has been good to can I prophesy to you the next time they will see you they say you are that man that God has been kind to you are that woman that God has been good to sit down I'm talking about the manifestations of the glory right the second thing that happens when the glory of God comes upon you is that he puts his name I he puts his name upon you I ah, yeah, 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 yeah. when the, the name of God is a seal upon your forehead powers of witchcraft will look at you and what they see on your forehead is Jesus ah. and when they see Jesus they see fire it means that you are separated it means that you are owned let me give you the, the let me give you a practical understanding of what I'm teaching you number two God puts his name when a man loves a girl what is the stages he entered friendship right from friendship to what to courtship from courtship what to marriage what seals it up he enters an oath with the woman and then he's joined to show that that woman is married what is one thing that happens to her 
thank you mama you are in the spirit <laughs> she collects the man's name so when she shows up she's no longer miss deborah she's now mrs deborah johnson <laughs> are, you with, are you following me now that's the point so the implication is this if that young woman gets to the market and any man shows up to molest her the husband does not want to know whether she's right or not are you with me that's a good man who <laughs> Some men of these days, <laughs> they will first peep from the window to check who the person is, whether they can find. But a, a man who truly loves his wife, he doesn't want to hear whether his wife is correct or not. He jumps in and wants to fight the man, even if the man is a giant. You know why? Because she bears his name and because he's married. So when God puts his name upon you, the next time the devil shows up in your dream, somebody write this now the next time the devil shows up in your dream the angel of god will stand up to defend you you know the reason why because now you bear his name so when the glory of god upon is upon you he puts his grace upon you he puts his name upon you number three which i've talked before when the glory of god is upon you he puts his grace upon you you become a beneficiary of grace automatically and then finally when the glory of God is upon you, he puts his mercy upon you. Let me talk to you about the mercy of God. The mercy of God simply means that God exempts you from the consequences of your mistakes until he works in you to repent. So he does not allow you to suffer the consequences of your error. Mercy says no. Mercy shields you and then God works on you. Mercy says no. And then God begins to see how to correct you. That's what mercy is. If you deserve to die, mercy says no. If you deserve to be defeated, mercy says no. So a man that carries the glory of God, carries the goodness and the kindness of God. A man that carries the glory of God, carries the name of God. A man that carries the glory of God, enjoys the grace of God. A man that carries the glory of God, carries the mercy of God. Somebody shout a big amen. amen. So we're going to get into prayers now. Are you ready? Yes, and the prayer will be backed up by ministration. Please listen to this. One of the things I've seen God do through my life is such that as we begin to pray, the angel of God will come into the atmosphere and then people will be taken in the trance. They will be teleported. Some of them will find themselves in their village. Not for fun. But they will be empowered to dig out what was buried that is working against them. It has happened over and over and over again. As we are praying, deep deliverances will be happening. As we are also praying, deep healings will be happening. I say deep healings will be happening. I told the lady that God was going to visit the church while we were praying. She slept. In that dream, an angel visited her. Her sister has been sick for so many, so many months, no medical cure. And the angel said to her, do you know this particular leaf? He said, yes. He said, when you wake up, describe the leaf to your sister. Tell her to cut it to grind it, to sift it, to steam with it, and to drink it for three days. That mysterious sickness will disappear. She came out of that trance, called the sister, told the sister, after three days, the affliction that the doctor could not cure disappeared. Hallelujah. We were in a crusade like this. The power of God hit the atmosphere. A young lady, she's always very slim. Because somehow, no matter what she eats, she doesn't grow fat. There was something inside her, but she didn't know. That fateful day, the power of God came upon her. She fell on the, on, under power in that meeting. And she was teleported. She entered a trance. And in that trance, she was looking at herself. And she saw something that looks like a serpent inside her stomach. And she saw the serpent move from her stomach to her leg. 
from her leg to her toe. And as her toe opened, the serpent came out. That was the end of that affliction. Listen to me, child of God. As we begin to pray, please be sensitive. Some of you, the angel of healing will come. It will take away the faulty organ. It will replace another organ. Are you with me? Miracles will begin to happen. Just recently, a young lady came like this to the church and we asked everybody who was sick just recently, about two weeks ago to line up. As we line up, we laid hand upon the girl. She fell under power. She fell under power. When she fell under power, God visited her. Something was in her stomach. She was supposed to go for surgery. By the time she came back from that experience, that was the end. She called her mother. The mother said, press it, press it. And she couldn't find it. My boy is here. Just last Sunday, a young lady came to church celebrating how God turned her life around. She came to a meeting, the kind of meeting like this. And I said that the power of God was going to move. She fell under power. She entered into a trance. She saw, I think, two ladies or two wicked women, one or two women, came to her and said to her, she will never be free. She challenged those women in that meeting, in the service. She challenged those women and said, no, I am here for freedom and I must be free. After that meeting, barely six months after, her marriage started. Listen to me, child of God. God is here and he will do wonders. Stand up, everybody. Are you ready to pray? Yes, sir. Are you ready to pray? Yes, sir. Oh yeah, lift up your hands and begin to talk to God and say, God, I don't want to go back the same way I came. Lord, I don't want to go back the same way I came. Lord, please help me, help me, help me, help me. I don't want to go back the same way I came.
Listen to me, child of God. Every head's bow and every eyes closed. People always say the people always say the devil is after me. The devil is after me. Some people say, ah, there's a man after me. There's a man after me. I always say to people, what if there is no enemy after you? What if there is no man after you? What if you are the enemy of yourself? Because you have rejected the God who sent his only begotten son to die for your sin. You can't be seeking help from a God that you have rejected and you have denounced. Yet, he still loves you even without. While I was preaching, something in your heart was telling you that you need to come back to God. Please, I don't want any noise, please. This is very important. Something was telling you that you need forgiveness. Something was telling you that you need to repent. Before we go into the miracle time, before we go into the deliverance time, please don't go back the same way you came. Don't turn your back on the love of Jesus. It's not about anybody. It's about you. Be sincere with God and say to God, I am a sinner. I am in iniquity. I will not lie, but I don't want to continue. I need Jesus. I need help. Oh God, forgive me. If you are amongst those I'm just speaking to, and this words that I just said touched your heart because you know that you have been in sin. You know that you have been in iniquity. You have been doing things that is, God is not happy with. Some addictions, some practices. But you are, you, are, you are tired. You are saying, I need God. You are saying, I'm a sinner. But I need Jesus to help me. Put your left hand on your chest. You are amongst those that are saying, Pastor, you just spoke to me and I don't want to pretend. My life is not right. My life is not right. There is iniquity in my life. There is sin in my life. And I need Jesus to help me. And I want to repent. Be very sincere. I'm speaking to those that have not given their life to Jesus. Or you have given your life to Jesus but you have backslidden. The love of God is calling you out now. Please put your hands on your chest. Because that's the first thing that matters to God. I'm not asking everybody. I'm asking those people who you know you have been living in sin but you know you need help and you need Jesus to forgive you and you don't want to go back if you are confident with this decision raise your other ha right hand up put your left hand on your chest raise the other one up and I'm talking to those who know that they have been sinning and they know God is not happy but they don't want to continue they want to say forgive me those are the people I'm talking to your left hand on your chest and the other hands up don't be ashamed. If your hand is up, say this with me. Say, Father, I acknowledge today that I am a sinner. I have lived in sin and I have not pleased you. Please forgive me. I don't want to continue like this. Jesus, come into my life. Help me by being my Lord and my Savior. And give me the power from today to live a righteous life. I promise not to go back to my ways, to the corrupt ways. I promise not to go back. From today, I will stand by Jesus and I will serve him for the rest of my life. In Jesus' mighty name. As your hands are lifted up, I pray for you. Father, Look at everyone here, Lord, that is sincere, saying, please forgive me. I ask that you forgive them. Amen. Blot their sins away. Amen. Remove that habit. Amen. Take away that addiction. Amen. Restore peace. And give them the power Amen. to live a righteous life. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. If you pray that prayer and you are sincere, just know that God has forgiven you. But don't go back to that way of life. 
to show you that God loves you. You will be the first set of people I'm going to shake their hands today. Before the prayer. If you pray that prayer and you mean it, come towards me and come and shake my hands as I congratulate you. And then you will go back and we'll start.